I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakradash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who rule well. Peace and salutations to the elect, and much respect to the brothers pushing his word in the four corners of the globe. Shalom to you, few sisters out there that's listening and learning and doing the right thing. It's Brother Ariel coming at you with a quick cut, okay? And before I get into uh, this video here, I would like to uh, apologize, you know, for the last video I made, okay? Because um, I wanted to do like a montage, right? And read the scriptures, okay? But for some reason, uh, the volume was still up on the video, so you can hear all the gunshots and things like that in the in the um, in the video. And that's not what I intended. That's not what I, you know, what I wanted. Okay, I wanted the word to be able to be heard, not the damn gunshots. Okay, and I wanted to apologize for that. Okay, I was, you know, doing it on a new device, and I thought that if I turn the volume down, that um, you wouldn't be able to hear what was going on in the video that I was playing. You only be able to hear my voice. But that was not the case, okay? And I wanted to uh, sincerely apologize for that because I wasn't being prudent, okay? And I didn't, uh, you know, watch my whole video before I put it out there, uh, you know, into the world, man. So I just wanted to apologize for that, and I wanted it to be known that that was not my intent, okay? So with that being said, um, this lesson is about... um these judgments that are going on out here with these children, man. Uh, the elder Manat Zakba did a lesson yesterday um, on various uh, topics, but one in particular where uh, two children or three, three uh, Israelite children were uh, swept out and into the waters and they all drowned. Okay. But I'm not going to uh, play a video on that. But I'm just going to make mention of it. Now, um, I came across this video I'm about to play of a nine-year-old girl that got shot uh, in the head, execution style, by a woman's uh, boyfriend. Okay? And there's another video of a young uh, um, Israelite child that I believe went missing, and they found his dead body in a pond. Okay? And this lesson is just about how the Heavenly Father uh, is out here um, handing out judgment, man, to women, children, right? Men, everybody. Everybody is getting it. No one is exempt, okay? So I'm just going to get into it, Lord willing, it's edifying. In the past 36 hours, at least four children have been shot in our area, two of them deadly. I, uh, just heart-wrenching. Can't really even describe is. it any other way. The latest, a nine-year-old girl who may have been a victim of a domestic dispute. Fox 26's Nate Griffin is live in the Houston Heights with more. Nate, what have you learned on this one? Well, Melissa and Jose, good morning to you. Very sad story here. First of all, we just found out that the suspect, 22-year-old Jeremiah Jones, is going to be charged with capital murder. This is what we just found out. Authorities are actually seeking an arrest warrant for his capture as we speak. That is what we know. Let me unpack this story for you. Once again, very, very tragic. Happened around 10.30 last night here on Oxford Street off I-10, which is near the Heights. A mother and her three children, approximate ages one, three, and nine, were watching television in their apartment with a former boyfriend who was not happy about the previous breakup with the mom shows up and makes entry into that apartment they didn't have any children together nor had they been married the mother who lives with a cousin was warned by that cousin the suspect was at the apartment complex but it was just a little too late the unthinkable took place once jones made entry the family got separated the suspect here uh, executed a nine-year-old little girl in the apartment with a with a, uh, a handgun. He then went after the uh, the mother, and she was shot also. However, she did survive the injuries, 
and she's at the hospital now, and I have interviewed her. Um, but we, we do have a person of interest we're looking for. Of course, uh, he's no longer here. Uh, we're looking for a, a, a man by the name of Jeremiah Jones. And once again, Jeremiah Jones is going to be charged with capital murder. Officer Case, or Cass rather, did give us a description and type of car uh, that uh, he's driving. Suspects of black male out on bond for other crimes with guns. Six feet tall, roughly 200 pounds, was wearing a black T-shirt and blue jeans and slides. Driving a black 2019 Chevrolet Camaro. That's a black 2019 Chevrolet Camaro. Tag number R. Yeah, so you saw the last video there where a nine-year-old girl got shot in the head over a uh, domestic uh, dispute, man. You know, the dude wasn't with the woman no more. And I guess, you know, he got in his feelings, broke up in the house, and, you know, <clears throat> shot the girl, in the, shot the little girl in the head, and shot the mother, man. You know, all in his feelings. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, Jake, Jake is always in some wickedness, man. This is why I made that uh, lesson yesterday. Uh, you know, the two-thirds got to be annihilated, man. Okay? They need to be put down. Right? All they know is, you know, let me go get a gun and, you know, put somebody to death, man. That's always their answer for everything. Why would you need to bring a gun to an apartment where there's a woman inside and three children, man? That, that is a coward, a cowardly act. But at the end of the day, okay, it's all ordained by the Heavenly Father, man. Okay? It's all ordained by the Heavenly Father. But I'm going to get into that, you know, through the scriptures. I just want to play this last video here and then, you know, bring some, scripture, some scriptures out. Lord willing, this is edifying. And then this is devastating news and certainly not the outcome that anyone in this community wanted. Nearly a five square mile area had been searched since yesterday. In the end, the boy's body was found almost within sight of the home that he somehow wandered away from. Tragically, at about 10 after 1 this afternoon, Harry's body was located in a pond adjacent to Rowley's tree farm. Middlesex DA Marion Ryan says the body of three-year-old Harry Condy was found close to shore, submerged in about five feet of water. The pond is about 650 feet straight from the babysitter's house on Frida Lane that Harry somehow walked away from yesterday. He was clothed in the clothes he had last been seen in. And there was no indication of external trauma. Leading up to the sad discovery, the search earlier today was even more urgent and robust than yesterday. About 200 personnel were taking part in the search using a wide variety of techniques and equipment. That pond was searched at about 11 o'clock yesterday morning by Lowell Fire Department. Obviously, Harry was not located in that area. And I want to again emphasize we do not know where he was from the time he went missing until he was located in the pond today. We spoke to Harry's aunt shortly before the boy's body was discovered. The mother is taking it like minute by minute. It's, it's not easy. Even though Harry's body has been found, this case is not closed. The ME will conduct an autopsy and the district attorney will continue investigating. There are still so many questions about how Harry just slipped away from his babysitter. Reporting live in Lowell, Todd Keskevich, WCVB News Center. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm just going to get right into it with the scriptures, okay? This is Job 4 and 7. It says, Remember, I pray thee, whoever perished being innocent, or where were the righteous cut off? Okay? So we all know that no one dies being innocent, man. No one. You know, not even these two children. OK, but <clears throat> I believe that, you know, these uh, deaths are, are mercy. OK, for the, the coming evils, you know, the evils that are coming on the earth, man. I believe the most High had mercy on these children, man. OK, and these, you know, all of these uh, drownings that's happening 
And all of these children that, that are being uh, put to death are signs from the Heavenly Father, right? Like how, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the elites, right, the, the quote-unquote higher-ups, if you will, right, they communicate with each other numerically, right, through signs, through TV, uh, through um, movies and TV and things of that nature, right? Through um, through the media, you know they communicate with each other. No one else really understands, uh, you know what it means. Okay, but they understand what it means, man. You know they have like a a, a secret communication, if you will, right? And that's the same way that the heavenly Father communicates with us. Okay. It's the same way he, he communicates with us through judgments, man. You know, that's how the Heavenly Father communicates with us, man. Not the only way, but that's one of his many ways that he communicates with us. Okay. To let us know, you know, the times that we're in. Right. Let me get Proverbs. Proverbs 28 and 5. Okay, and it says, evil men understand not judgment, but they that seek the Lord understand all things. Okay, so no one else really understands why, you know, these all these children are getting put to death, right? Why all of these things are happening. You know, a, a woman just got dismembered, right? You know, a sex worker just got dismembered. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, three children... Uh, drowned in the, uh, I, I believe it was in a river, got sucked under, and they drowned, okay? And other judgments as well, man. Two other kids just uh, just drowned as well, man. I should have played that video, but I didn't, okay? And another kid got swept away um, in that, uh, I, what was it? I don't know if it was a landslide, but where the house got pulled into the, the river, you know, a 10-year-old kid died in that, you know, but this is the way that the Heavenly Father communicates with us, you know, Salakia, that's the way that he communicates with us, right, and only we understand it, but no one else understands the the messages, okay, if you will. And it's just the Heavenly Father handing out judgment, man. And, and, you know, a lot of people get caught up in their uh, in their feelings about these things, man. But they don't really have any understanding, you know, about the works of the Lord. And they don't have any understanding about the Lord, about the Lord, period, man. Okay. Let's go to Isaiah. Salafia. Yeah. Go to the book of Isaiah. I want uh Isaiah forty-five and seven. Isaiah forty-five and seven. It says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create and create evil. I the Lord do all these things. Okay? But most people don't understand this. They don't understand that it's the Heavenly Father that's orchestrating these terrible things, you know, that, that happened, man. It's the Heavenly Father. It's not anyone else but him, man. Okay? But only we understand that, man. We understand that the Heavenly Father is communicating with us, okay? And by these judgments, he's letting us know that more judgments are coming. And they're going to be coming on a larger scale. And basically what he's telling us is, to prepare our minds for that. You know, prepare to, to lose people that are close to you, man. Okay? Prepare to see more death. The Most High is telling us to prepare ourselves for what's coming, man. All right? Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy 10 and 17.
It says, for the Lord, Yahweh is a power. Salakia. For the Lord, Yahweh, your power, is a power of the gods. Let me just read it verbatim. For the Lord, your God, is God of gods and Lord of lords, a great power, a mighty and terrible, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. So it really doesn't matter if they were children or anything like that. The Most High is not a respecter of persons. It doesn't matter if you're old. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, a baby, right? It don't matter if you're rich, poor, you know, if you're ugly or if you're good looking, right? It don't matter, man. The Most High does not care about any of that, okay? When it's your time to go, it's your time to go. He doesn't respect anything about anyone, man. He's not a respecter of persons. Let's get that in Romans. Romans 2 and 11. Okay? It says, For there is no respect of persons with the Most High. Right? The Most High does not respect uh, people, man. Right? And he doesn't uh, He doesn't say, Well, you know what? It's a baby. You know, don't, don't, I'm not going to put him to death. Or, you know, that's a beautiful woman there. You know, I'm not going to do nothing to her. You know? He doesn't care about any of that, man. When it's your time to go, it's your time to go. But only we understand that judgment, man. And the rest of the world does not understand judgment, man. The rest of the world will say, I don't believe in a God that'll take a baby's life. Or I don't believe in a God that allow a woman to get chopped up, man. Okay? That's because they don't know the Lord, man. That's how because they don't understand the power of the Lord, man. The Lord is far out, man. He's way beyond our, our comprehension, okay? His thoughts are not our thoughts, right? But we all we understand that all of his works, all of his judge, judgments are in righteousness, man, okay? Whether they be good or bad, which is the balance of the Lord, right? Let me go to Isaiah. Go back to the book of Isaiah, chapter 57. Salakia, 57 and 1. Okay, it says, The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart, and merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. Okay, and that goes into what I said earlier, man. The Most High could have just had mercy on these two children, man, you know, and taken them away for the, for you know, so they don't have to go through the evils that are coming, man. Those could have been, <clears throat> those those could have been, uh, it could have been mercy, man, from the Heavenly Father, man, to take them away so they don't have to go through, you know, the, the pestilence and, and the famine, right, and the mass death and the destruction. And the chaos, you know, and all the suffering that is about to come in the world, man. Okay? Which is, uh, let me get that. Ezekiel 7, man. Okay? And it says, thus saith the Lord power and evil and only evil. Behold is come. An end is come. The end is come. It watcheth. For thee, behold, it is come, man. And that evil is coming, man. And I believe that those were uh, acts of mercy from the Heavenly Father, man. So those children didn't have to go through the things that are coming on the earth. Okay? I'm going to get uh, <clears throat> Sarat. The book of Sarat, chapter 43. In verse 29, it says, The Lord is terrible and very great and marvelous in his power. Okay? He's terrible, very great and marvelous in his power, man. You know, the Heavenly Father is able to do anything, man. There's nothing that is too hard for him to do. There's nothing that is out of his reach that he can't, he can't do, man. The Heavenly Father is marvelous in his power, okay? And very great. And he is to be feared, 
because of his power, because of the things that he can orchestrate, because of the things that he can do, right? Let's go to Psalms 9 and 16 real quick. I'm going to make this quick. Lord willing, this is edifying. Psalms 9 and 16, and it says, The Lord, Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, is known by the judgment which he executeth. The wicked is snared in the work of his own, <clears throat> own hands. Higion Salah. Okay? So us, we know that it's the Lord that is do that's doing these things. Okay, but the, like I said earlier, the um the scripture I read earlier, the wicked do not understand that it's the Lord that's doing these things, man. The wicked give the uh uh say that uh Satan is doing it, man. That's who the wicked believe is out here, you know, casting out these judgments, handing out these judgments, man. Okay? But we know it's the Lord, man. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executeth. Okay? The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. Right? And I'm going to go to uh, Sirach 1 and 8. Let's go to Sirach chapter 1 and verse 8 real quick. And it says, There is only one wise and greatly to be feared, the Lord sitting upon his throne. Okay? So it ain't Satan that you need to fear, okay, or the devil, which is the white man, the only one that needs to be feared, okay, is, is the heavenly father, Yahweh, okay, and his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, right? But it says there is one wise and greatly to be feared, the Lord sitting upon his throne, okay? That's who is to be feared, man, right? Because the most high is the one that issues out judgments, man. The Most High is the one that puts people to death, right? Let's get that in Psalms, Psalm 68 and 20. Okay, it says, He that is our power is a power of salvation, and unto the Most High, the Lord belong the issues from death, okay? So it's the Heavenly Father and anyone, anytime someone is put to death, the Heavenly Father has something to do with it, man. No one else but the Heavenly Father, okay? So all the deaths that we're about to see, right? All the people that we're about to see put to death, the Lord did it, man. A great judgment is coming, man, okay? And these are these are uh, telltale signs that the Most High has given us, telling us to prepare ourselves for what is to come. Because there's going to be a lot more death, man. There's going to be a lot more death, man. Okay, this is just happening on a small scale right now, man. It's about to happen on a large scale. Okay, where it's not just, you know, one or two or three people dying in a clip, man. It's going to be like 50,000, 100,000 people dying in one clip. You know? A whole lot of people dying at one time is going to be norm is going to be the norm soon man and the most high is telling us to prepare our minds and our spirits for these things that are about to come on the earth man through the judgments that he's executing now okay i got one more uh Deuteronomy 32 and 39 Okay, and it says, see now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive, I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Okay, no one can deliver out of the Heavenly Father's hand, and it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power, man. It's the Most High that kills. He makes alive, he wounds, he heals. Okay. It is the Most High that does all these things, man. Okay? And the Most High is communicating, is communicating with us through the Spirit, man. Through His works. Right? Let me just get this to back it up real quick. Hebrews 10 and 31. And then that'll be the lesson in Lord Willing's edifying. Right? 
And I brought this out yesterday, but I'm going to bring it out again. Hebrews 10 and 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hand of the living power, man. Okay? So, you know, stay prayed up. You know, try to offend the Heavenly Father less and less every day. Pray that you're of the elect. Pray that when all these evils and all this destruction and all of these uh things come on the earth, that the Heavenly Father has the angels looking out for you, man. Because that's the only way that you're going to be safe in, in these evil times that are fastly approaching, that are about to come upon us, man. Okay? And I just saw a video that a brother put up where, you know, it was a whole bunch of uh, dead cows, man, on the side of the street, man. Like they had all just been put to death. And they were all just lined up, you know? It had to be like over a thousand cows, man. Just laying there on their back, laying on their sides. You know, it's about to go down, man. You know, this famine is coming. You know, evils are coming, man. So prepare your mind, prepare your spirit for these things that are coming, man. Because the Heavenly Father is, is trying to communicate with us, man, through his judgments. All right? So, uh... Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to say shalom to the next one.